Variable rate fertilizer. Farmers have had the ability to do it for years. The question has just been, does it pay? And many farmers may have had the equipment to be able to accomplish putting on varying rates of fertilizer throughout the field, but did they have the confidence to set up their own plan and to really feel like I'm going to get results out of this that I want next fall? Right, because at this point, a lot of guys have just had it done, this variable rate fertilizer, custom done. But I guess what we wanted to talk to you about today is you can do it yourself and is that going to pay for you on the farm? All right, when we look at our own farm uh, over the last couple of years, it's been a great opportunity for us to do variable rate fertilizer. We had extreme drought. We had some areas in our fields that were pretty sandy and we got zero yield two years in a row on some of our fields and some of these little spots. Now, when you think about it, if you're applying the same rate of fertilizer across your whole field, now you've got all this fertilizer sitting in those spots from two years of applications. With variable rate fertilizer, we can simply take our yield map, find those spots where we got zero yield this year, and do some soil testing in those areas to prove it and to back up the information. But when we see that our fertility levels are just off the charts because we've got all the fertilizer that we put out there for a full crop, it's pretty easy to say, you know what, when I do variable rate fertilizer, I'm not going to put additional fertilizer there or put very little in those spots. Yep, but here's the thing. If you're looking for yield gain out of this variable rate fertilizer, chances are you're not going to get it or at least not going to get that big level that you're looking for. You may see a small amount, but what you're going to find more than anything is two things. Number one, you're going to be able to cut back on fertilizer in certain areas, like in our case, where we have all kinds of fertilizer sitting there in some spots. We don't need to add more fertilizer, there's more than enough to raise the next crop. The other side of it is, even if you save nothing, even if you gain no yield, here's the big thing. You're being more environmentally conscious. Yeah, it might not be t exactly top of mind for you, but it is a big deal because we're all in this thing together. And if we as farmers don't do a good job, we don't manage our nutrients responsibly, someone else is going to tell us how to farm going forward. All right, when you think about variable rate application across a field, what are we really gonna do variable rate on? And what are we gonna say, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense for me. For right. example, on our farm, we like to use micronutrients because they are essential elements. And in many cases, they're the yield limiting factors in our fields. We found this across the country. So for us, using micronutrients is really a no brainer. Well, micronutrients, we're using just a few pounds and it costs about 10 bucks. Are we really going to variable rate that across the field? Absolutely not. Why would we do that? I mean, what are we going to vary it from an $8 rate to a $10 rate? No, that doesn't make any sense for us at all. But when we're thinking about phosphorus and potassium, these are things that we're definitely going to variable rate across the field. And you know what? It may be using $100 or $200 worth of P and K in some areas of the field. In other areas, it may be $50. That's a big deal. That's a huge cost savings that we could have if there's plenty of nutrient already in those areas to raise the crop we want to raise. The other big thing is thinking about the leachable nutrients. So I'm talking specifically the primary nutrient, nitrogen, and the secondary nutrient sulfur. Both of those are going to be leachable. At least nitrogen will be in the nitrate form. So we got to be real careful with both of those. So if you have sandy soil or just low cation exchange capacity numbers, these light ground fields, those areas in fields, you don't want to overdo it on nitrogen and sulfur because they're going to leach through when you get some rain. So those are the nutrients I'm especially concerned about. Yes, the phosphorus and potassium is one thing. That's okay. But the way I look at it, even in the lighter ground, the phosphorus and potassium is probably still well, going to it's stay more, there. It's more about, a, it to it's more about it. your return on investment when you're thinking about that. If you put a little too much phosphorus on or a little too much potassium on, especially if you're deep placing it, it's going to be there for the future. Yeah, it's but not here's like it's the big go question. Away. Okay, so we bring that up. But if you own the ground, you say, well, I own the ground, so what? I'm just putting money in the bank. Big deal. I might well, put I, money in the bank for 20 years, okay, but well, so what? Tell, I'll get the return someday, or my kids will, or my grandkids will. You tell that to the banker when the ag economy tightens up here a little bit. I want to get a good return on my investment. I don't want to put a bunch of stuff out there that I'm not going to be able to access for a few years down the road. What I'm looking at, like with the nitrogen, as you were mentioning, uh, we did some of this on our farm this fall. We went variable rate with some anhydrous application. So we put low rates out of anhydrous and varied it throughout the field. Now next spring, we're going to finish off the rest of the nitrogen that we need when we put our pre-emerge herbicide out. We can put it right with liquid, do it all in one pass as we're putting out our pre's. Uh, it will be a constant rate across the field at that time. So by varying the rate this fall, now we'll end up with a net varied rate out there, even though next spring we want to put liquid across the whole field. Okay, let's come back to you doing this work yourself. Now, 
Now, it can absolutely be done with strip till. It can be done with a number of different things on your farm, but let's say you have a dry fertilizer spreader. That's where it gets just a little bit tricky. Okay, well, you talk about how it's not going to work, Brian, but then you think about how well, can, it can that work. work. Yeah, it can work. You just have to have some type of variable drive motor on your spreader or whatever you happen to be running. So the big thing is just talking to your equipment provider on how things can work and then having an agronomist you're working with to put together a prescription map. So we've got an agronomist that works in our office and he puts together prescription maps for people and it only takes him a few minutes. He'll usually base it on yield maps, but then we can also look at fertility maps. In other words, soil test maps. So for example, lime is something that's very important to variable rate or especially spread in some areas and not spread in other areas. If I've got a soil pH of six in one area of the field and it's eight in the other area, I don't really need a whole bunch of lime in that eight area, but I absolutely need it in the six. Well, everybody certainly has a different situation. Your farm is different than ours and, and your management style is a little different than ours. Your equipment is different, what, whatever. I, I mean, we can say that about anything. It's just important that you take a look at variable rate, especially on things like fertilizer. It can impact the environment if we do things wrong. And people are certainly looking. If we're making mistakes out here, it's gonna bring more regulation to us and we don't wanna have that happen. Plus, fertilizer is really expensive. You know that on your farm. You don't want to over apply. So learn a little bit more about it and do variable rate fertilizer on your farm. You can study up on it this winter and be ready to go next year. Well, another thing you need to study up on this winter is how you're going to control our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how we do it on our farm coming up later in the show.